Global approaching Space Station Armstrong, initiating docking sequence. Boarding team for recon mission on standby. Overriding station's lockout system. Override sequence complete. You are clear for entry. All right, Marines. Scans haven't picked up any strong activity, but stay vigilant and keep your eyes peeled. The team will follow up our sweep for corpse identification and recovery. someone. A Marine. He's severely injured. Hey buddy, can you hear me? Damn, what happened to you? He's alive? Yes, but his face. HQ, we've got one survivor. Now bringing him back to the Hannibal. Not a rat. Have we got an identification? You are Corporal Kane of Rhino Squad. Welcome aboard the Hannibal. All squad will need to be by Rhino Squad, the following is highly classified and is not to be spoken of outside these walls. Heard the mechanics are prepping four heavy trucks. So what does that mean? Not sure. But with that many trucks, HQ's planning something. The death of the Macron couldn't have come at a better time. It's imperative we press that advantage. The apprehensions of the Terran Coalition of Man were validated with the revelation of the Nexus, a vast communication network enabling Strog leaders to directly dispatch orders to their combatants on the battlefield. What the hell are we doing messing with a bomb like this? What's the worry? You got a pacemaker? I know an electromagnetic burst won't hurt us, but if this thing went off, the charge would fry every piece of electronic gear for half a mile. You know where we'd be if the Strog captured an EMP and set it off near the Hannibal? We'd be fighting the rest of this war with rocks and sticks. Our target, known as the Hub, houses major communication lines to the Nexus. We will be escorting a convoy carrying an electromagnetic bomb to a sub-level of this building. During the Earth invasion, initial indications of such structure were uncovered following the discovery of a hidden slipgate, secluded in a North African valley. In response, the Global Defense Force mounted an assault aimed at infiltrating and taking control of the gate. On the other side, the Strog had established a Nexus Tower, serving as the primary command and control hub for their forces on Earth. Its destruction didn't afford the GDF the opportunity to study it, as they likely did not fully grasp the significance and pivotal role this tower played within the invaders' empire. Now, Earth forces have uncovered that Strogos not only possesses its own nexus, but also utilizes a unique technology designed to encompass the extensive scale of the entire planet. The blast will overload a device known as the Tetranode and effectively cut off the Strog forces from the nexus and therefore their commanders. To ensure success, three other squads will be escorting additional EMPs to the same location. Their convoys are codenamed War, Famine, and Pestilence. Which means we are death. Yeah, we're death. Positioned within a large tower, the Tetranode acts as a massive data router, transmitting commands received from the Nexus directly to Strog troops on the field. The Nexus sounds most intriguing. To be able to process the thoughts of billions of Strog would require technology that is many generations beyond us. Although the precise number of Tetranodes remains unspecified, it is assumed that several are distributed throughout Strogos, each overseeing logistics for a designated region. This discovery also pushed us to reevaluate certain communication facilities encountered during the initial assault on Strogos. For instance, the communication laser in the Palace of Cerberon may have been a tetranode, unknown to human forces at that time. Corporal Kane, your ride to the convoy is waiting for you. Step on through. During the briefing, we were quickly introduced to General Ulysses Harper. As one of the highest-ranking officers, with only the position of General of the Army ranking higher than his own, he remains a mysterious figure due to the limited information available. However, considering his impressive array of ribbons and assuming his age aligns with the storied history of the USS Hannibal, it's likely that he has experienced his fair share of conflict even before the Earth invasion. Damn it! That hurt! I told you these systems are finicky. These systems are ancient. Tell me about it. My grandfather served on this ship right out of boot camp. Think they'd retire, old girl. Well, 
Old or not, we gotta fix her. The USS Hannibal is organized across four decks. While the specific functions of some floors remain unknown, it's likely that decks one to three house the ship's navigation center, along with various areas such as living quarters, system controls, training rooms, or additional cargo bays. On the other hand, deck four serves as a hub for diverse and crucial areas. We are unable to send or receive signals in that area due to Strog interference. But a Strog unit is headed directly for Cougar Squad. Sorry, there's nothing we can do, Corporal. Then they're all dead men. Richard's out. Including the Central Command overseeing ground troops, reactor control, drop pods, launch station, and medical facilities, where scientists can be observed studying various Strog remains. These studies have unveiled two instances of what many others endured during the Earth invasion, exemplified by the cases of Samuel Dorn and Shane Huxley. From DNA, the subject has been identified as Samuel Dar, listed as missing and presumed dead after the Strog invasion of Earth. Apparently, he was captured and forced to endure biomechanical implants. The procedure for attaching the implants is evidently quite traumatic. The subject must be kept alive by a combination of steroids and health packs. While it can be difficult to distinguish human aspects from this dead grunt, it could suggest that the Strog not only remove parts from their subjects to replace with technology, but also interchange pieces between them, which would explain Samuel's dawn DNA found in this monstrosity. Shane Huxley's story is equally tragic. A former member of Rhino Squad during the Earth invasion, his absence likely paved the way for Kane's placement in the unit. We can understand that Huxley was captured towards the end of the invasion. The horror of his transformation was uncovered when a marine reconnaissance squad, operating in a putrefaction facility, encountered and eliminated Huxley. His body was subsequently brought back to the Hannibal, where a DNA test revealed the horrific truth of his fate. All higher brain functions have atrophied, which indicates the subject was incapable of independent thought. The transceiver located at the base of the skull shows almost all action was dictated by an external source. I believe for a short time after strogification, the subject was aware of his actions but was unable to control them. Chilling scenario, to say the least. Do you see? It's just as I predicted. Indeed. The nanites infesting the muscle are repairing the tissue even after it's separated from the body. During their conversion process, the Strogs are injected with nanite colonies, microscopic machines or robots, often at the scale of a few nanometers, designed to perform tasks at a cellular level. So, are they certain it's dead? I was assured by Lieutenant Pierce it's completely dead. You remember this morning? They told us that one was dead too. That, I'll never forget. This intervention seems essential to mitigate the extreme physical trauma from strogification, ensuring that their organic components neither decompose nor fall apart as a result of biological degradation. It won't work, Jacobson. The exoskeleton is hardened tribinium. Nonsense. These saws cut through marine body armor. Should have no trouble with this strog metal. While this detail wasn't uncovered on Earth, possibly as the strog started using locally sourced materials for their troop equipment, it has since been revealed that their technology relies heavily on hardened tribinium. I just have to press a little harder. Unlike removable equipment, the Strog seem to prioritize permanently melding gear, weaponry, and other technologies directly to their unit's flesh. A prime example of this is the Icarus with its gravitational pack, where the unit's arms were removed to integrate the machine directly into its back. This fusion to their neural systems not only enables continuous flight, but also grant the Icarus enhanced agility compared to the propulsion devices used as a separated vehicle. Lieutenant Voss, report to briefing. You don't remember me, do you? I was one of the orderlies at the hospital when they wheeled you in from Armstrong. How's that new eye of yours? I was surprised how much the military spent. It's top of the line. Not like the usual replacements. Kane's reputation as a survivor is cemented by his harrowing experience aboard space station Armstrong. I thought Matthew Kane was just a story they made up to scare recruits. No, he's real. And he's standing right in front of us. In an intense battle against the Strog, he was the sole survivor. A fact that remains seal in secrecy by strict orders, fueling rumors about that Strogs were not the only things he encountered there. It looked like he'd been mauled by a dozen pit bulls. Hey! You're the Matthew Kane I heard about back on the Hannibal, aren't you? Didn't you wind up spending some time in psych ward after Space Station Armstrong? Even if they gave me the green light to spill everything about Armstrong, 
I'd hold back. Nobody should be burdened with those kinds of nightmares. Signal check for Pestilence. Your signal is strong, Pestilence. Switch to secured frequency 461. Roger that. Switching to 461. We're rolling out to the convoy, whole squads gearing up, except for Anderson. The kid's been told to hang back on the Hannibal. We're diving deep into strong territory, and it looks like command's bracing for the worst. They're figuring on casualties too heavy for any quick patch-up job to make a difference. You've done some good work today, Corporal. Lieutenant Voss had a feeling about you. Said you'd be trouble, but you'd be worth it. The lieutenant's never wrong. Starting to get the measure of the rhinos. Bidwell comes off tough as nails at first. What are you doing wasting my time? Kane, you are trying my patience. Corporal, get on that truck before I throw your sorry ass on it myself. But I see the reason behind it. The squad needs someone rock solid to keep us together, especially when things get thick. This guy, Sergeant Bidwell, has one guy thrown over his shoulder and is barking out orders as he blazes away with a rifle in his hand. The man was a freaking machine. What squad was he with? I'm not sure, but he was protecting some obnoxious computer tech. He's got a relentless edge, sure. But that's what it takes. You gotta love the Marine Corps. Sure, the pay ain't the greatest and the chow tastes like crap, but where else am I gonna make a living blowing shit up? Just think of it. Rhino Squad is participating in a mission that would turn the tide of this war. We will be saving the human race. Can you imagine the party for us back on Earth when this is over? We're gonna be war heroes. And seeing how we're the brave warriors who protected Earth, the girls are gonna be very appreciative. Oh, it's gonna be a sweet time. But I'm not quitting the Corps, even after the war is over. It's a perfect place for a man of my skills. And temperament. HQ, this is Famine. We are in transit now. Well, to that, Famine. Pestilence is already underway. Godspeed. HQ, this is Eagle 8. We are doing a flyby of Famine. HQ, this is War. We are proceeding to Checkpoint 1. Operation Advantage unfolds deep within Strog territory necessitating the convoys to navigate through intense combat zones with the inherent risk of detection by enemy forces. Doesn't it make you nervous we're heading in the opposite direction of everyone else? It's meant to draw the Strog forces away from us. But what if we're caught? The Strog could turn around and use our EMP bombs against us. I'm sure HQ's thought of that. At least I hope they have. Come on, Doyle, get us out of here! Our guys are really cleaning up the flyers since you blew up the hangars, Kane. Bison Squad, specialists in vehicle combat previously seen operating walkers, now supports with hover tanks, safeguarding the convoy from aerial he attacks. Just took out the end truck. The fire is making a second pass. I can't get a lock on it. Don't worry, we got his ass dead on sight. It has been eliminated. Score one for the good guys. You can get off, Kane. This is your stop. The troops See seem unsure about this mission. It's critical. Yet we're keeping our numbers lean to stay under the radar. I can't believe the level of security on this mission. I tried calling home and a couple of MPs jumped me. Said I couldn't have any outside access. Even if I was stupid enough to say something about our mission, it takes six freaking hours for the messages to reach home. Our ranks thin with every passing hour, and each loss potentially strengthens the enemy's forces. Kane, where the hell have you been? Lieutenant Voss wants you to catch up with him. Hop on that truck and they'll get you where you need to be. But hey, on the bright side, Bidwell seems to be in high spirits. Death, this is HQ. What is your status? We are in the green and proceeding forward. Very good. HQ out. The convoy's path to the Nexus hub traverses the desolate terrains of Strogos, differing from Cerberon's relatively orderly environment, where signs of water and cleaner structures were once visible. Here, the scene is dominated by dirt, rock and metal structures that show signs of minimal upkeep. Crap. That must be one of those drop turrets. Their drop by stealth air units flying in low orbit. Intel says these buggers are nasty. Although not particularly durable, they pose a significant hazard if inserted amidst the turmoil of combat. HQ, this is Pestilence. We've reached checkpoint one and are proceeding to checkpoint two. HQ, HQ, this is convoy famine. The strong have launched missiles on us. Famine, this is HQ. Air support is on its way. Negative, do not send back up. The area is swarming with strong. We're a lost cause. Kane, you still there? We're down to three convoys, so haul ass and meet me at that building just up ahead. We need you to take down that fence. Foss out. HQ, this is Armadillo Squad. We enter the vehicle tunnels just as the power went out. Now we're trapped because all the doors are in lockdown. We'll keep you apprised of our situation. We're 
We're gonna lose this war. I can feel it. Don't you be talking like that. We have to stand a chance of winning, right? I, I mean, HQ wouldn't just throw away our lives on a lost cause. Hey, you've heard the news from the front. You know how bad things are. I don't know nothing. I do my job and shut the hell up, just like you should. We're getting slaughtered on every front because the straw got us outnumbered. The 3rd Armored Walker Division fought Strog Infantry about 30 clicks from here. Normally it'd be no contest, but there were so many Strog, they swarmed the walkers. We're gonna win this war, damn it! The Strog can't be allowed to attack Earth again. I'm just telling it like it is. We're all gonna wind up Strog. The station is a vast maze of corridors, burrowing deep into the ground and leading to a subterranean tunnel that opens to the exterior. This base houses the controls and supplies power to a defense network, mirroring the grid control system encountered in the security complex on the outskirt of Cerberon. It's noteworthy that although we never directly observed the actual grid protecting the big gun, we did witness its use in safeguarding the Strog military compound against the Gex. This type of defense proves as lethal to Strogs as it is to any other life forms attempting to cross it. They also previously employed a special type of security gate, capable of discerning whether an entity attempting to pass through was Strog or not. A similar detection mechanism was also encountered in the research hangar, where Stepchild attempted to deactivate a laser barrier. However, his efforts were thwarted when the system detected his DNA was not registered in the database. In an attempt to add his DNA, he used a medical scanner to encode his genetic information into the system, only to be identified as a threat and forced to seek an alternative method to bypass the barrier. Corporal Kane, boss wanted me to give you this strong nail gun. I bet it can sure rip the shit out of a squib. A shotgun version of the nail gun was previously witnessed used during the Earth invasion. But it may be surprising to learn that it was not the first time we saw such weapon in action. Its first sighting can be traced back to 1996, when similar weaponry was observed within a secret complex located in the southwestern USA. This site is notably where Dr. Gilman first encountered the Strog and utilized their knowledge and technology to enhance his own slipgate. The discovery of Strog crates scattered around the facility suggests that researchers there might have been studying and potentially reverse engineering more alien technologies including the nail gun, long before the Strog publicly emerged as a threat to Earth. Ah, Corporal Kane! You continue to surprise me by staying alive. Go to Lieutenant Voss in that control room. He has orders for you. Hang on. Help's coming. Medic! I need a medic! The kid here got careless. Didn't check the door before opening it. Uh, Strog was waiting for him. He's lost a lot of blood. HQ said a medic would be here in five minutes. It was ten minutes ago. Go to containment door 12. I'm running a test. Glad you made it back, Kane. Strauss, what's our situation? I now control almost all containment doors. We cannot reach the controls to turn off the laser fence. The security door is locked and I cannot open it from here. That's where you come in, Kane. Get down to sub-entrance one and free the engineering team that's trapped. Then escort one of the engineers up here to cut through that door. Take Singer and Rodriguez with you. Good luck. Just got orders from Lieutenant Voss. We're accompanying you to sub-entrance one. About damn time we had to frag some squibs. Okay, Strauss, open the door. And I will be locking the door behind you. The installation is permeated with numerous obscured alcoves, strategically utilized by the Strog as ambush sites. This tactical use of the environment to launch sudden assaults is disconcerting. Through employing guerrilla warfare tactics, the Strog methodically erode the combat effectiveness of Earth's forces. This approach serves to implant a continuous sense of vulnerability and apprehension among the troops, effectively using psychological warfare to complement their physical attacks. Very good. Now, activating the door.
show up. Take me back to the door they want me to Something open. about this place sets my nerves on edge. You catch sounds from every direction, but pinning down their source is another story. Hey, the torch is here. Hey, you seen Beesman? Wonder how he's doing. Seal it! Seal the damn window now! Where the hell did that come from? Don't know, but we better inform the Sarge. Sarge, we got movement on the scan. Okay, be sure to lay down- Shit! We almost got your freaking head bent. Marines, take your positions. We got company. Scan is clean. Whatever it was is gone. Here's your objective, Corporal. Get to that console and deactivate the defense grid. The situation deteriorated rapidly as Strog tactics evolved from hit and run skirmishes to a coordinated onslaught in mere moments. Destroyer USS Madison has achieved suborbital position. Comlinks established for primary tactical operation HQ. All company commanders transmit sit reps immediately. HQ! HQ, our squad's been down and meeting heavy resistance. We're running out of time. HQ, this is Fox Squad in Sector 6. We, we have engaged the Strog. I can't see a thing! Bravo, We've got a situation at Alpha Niner. This abrupt shift is a perfect example of the Nexus's strategic danger, enabling the Strog to mobilize and direct their forces with terrifying efficiency. Amidst this chaos, a familiar yet enhanced threat is revealed. Standing at an imposing height of eight feet, the Gladiator still boasts his usual shoulder-mounted railgun but now has a new arm-mounted plasma blaster integrated into his claw. Additionally, the heavy unit is fortified with a robust energy shield capable of deflecting all incoming projectiles, including the explosive force of direct rocket hits. This is Pestilence. Convoy grid is down. This is war. The defense grid is fully deactivated. Shit. We've been spotted by strong flyers. War, come in. War, please respond. Kate, we're moving out before the Strog find our convoy. We lift the hover tank for you. Grab it, and you'll be able to rendezvous with us in no time. Bid well out. As soon as Kane takes his position in the designated tank, he's immediately besieged by Hornets. Despite bearing the same name, these Hornets lack the durability of their elite counterparts seen previously guarding crucial locations within Cerberon. Reminiscent of the Tormentor model deployed against Earth, their agility is their main advantage, skillfully evading tank shells with disconcerting ease. These pests are also observed airlifting and deploying convoys onto the battlefield. While a precisely aimed shot can dispatch them, landing that shot proves challenging until they pause to commence their attack sequence. Amidst the fray, another formidable opponent emerges the heavy hover tank. Classified within the Strog Tank Division, its resilience is unmatched. Armed with a colossal missile launcher as its right arm that sends large guided missiles hurtling towards targets, and a wrist-mounted blaster on its left arm capable of rapid fire, they serve as further evidence of the vast array of species assimilated by the Strog, displaying unique physiological traits not seen in other unit types. Feels like I'm in an aqueduct, but there's not a drop of water in sight. Looks like they repurposed it as some sort of logistic corridor after the water vanished. We've witnessed the horror and brutality of the Strog through their towering units. The Yorg, the Super Tank, or the Black Widow, to name a few. Yet, these massive war machines pale in comparison to the sheer scale and power of what the Strog have now unleashed. The Rituis is Bison 8. See anything? I got nothing. Wait a second. I got a reading. Holy shit! What is that? The Harvester. At an 
intimidating height of 50 feet, these spider-like mechanical behemoths are the last thing any soldier hopes to face. Known primarily as anti-vehicle units, their resilience in battle is unparalleled, shrugging off the most lethal attacks from SMC's arsenal. Each harvester comes armed with twin automatic blasters for sustained fire, designed to subdue opponents under a relentless barrage. Additionally, their backs house launch tubes capable of deploying homing rockets aimed with deadly accuracy at enemy vehicles. The most fearsome aspect of their design lies in their legs, capable of impaling targets with lethal efficiency. Beyond their martial prowess, the harvester's elongated appendages emerging from its torso hint at a role beyond mere combat. Whispers of fear circulate about the harvesters and their macabre practices, scavenging the bodies of their fallen foes, or in a worse scenario, those still clinging to life. Being captured alive by the strong is a fate far worse than death, as the horrors awaiting these unfortunate souls at strong facilities are incomparable. Exactly how far behind enemy lines are we? Far enough that it doesn't matter anymore. What do you mean by that? We're completely on our own. You mean it could take several minutes before we receive any backup? No, I mean we aren't receiving any backup at all. We're cut off from the rest of the human forces. All right, Marines, listen up. The Strog have taken out the other convoys. We're all that's left. This mission's too big for any screw-ups. No one take any chances. No one try to be the hero. We're looking to get the EMP below the Tetra node brains of this facility. Why is it so cold down here, Strauss? The frigid temperature is no doubt the result of the strong communication equipment employing cryogenic technologies. Let's find a way to open that hatch so we can move forward. All clear. Okay, man. Let's move out. What the hell was that? I don't know, but leave it alone. Ah, very good. This appears to be the control room. Isn't there one spot somewhere on Strogos where I'm not either freezing my ass off or drowning in my own sweat? There. I have unlocked the passage. All right, convoy. Open the hatchways in advance. Negative. Remain where you are. I hope you have a real good reason for doing that, soldier. I apologize, but if they were to open the hatchway, they would have been subjected to supercooled air. Their lungs would have been frozen in a matter of seconds. Okay, so what do we do? I must find the temperature controls. From there, I should be able to make the atmosphere a little less hostile. Sounds good. Kane, you're with Strauss. Find those controls. You assign me only one guard? Must I die to show you how valuable I am? Never mind. This way, Corporal Kane. So who did you piss off that you always get stuck babysitting Strauss? Here, we encounter clear examples of the disturbing outcomes of the Strog's experimental endeavors within their research laboratories. In these tests, Strog scientists coldly remove organs without anesthesia to observe the agony and physiological responses of their victims, even determining how long a human can survive without them. These harrowing experiences likely led the Strog to explore and discover alternative energy sources. Previously seen as relying on Stedium for their main power source, this shift raises interesting considerations about the disparity in energy quality across various parts of Strogos. Cerberon, once the capital of the Strog Empire, was primarily powered by Stedium. This significant energy source was known not only to support the planetary defense system, but also vital infrastructure, such as tectonic stabilizers and the multitude of technologies inside of the Macron's palace. However, with Strogos almost depleted of its natural resources and crystal mines becoming increasingly scarce, it became evident 
that stedium alone might not be sufficient to power the entire planet. To counter this, the Strog would have turned to alternative sources of power, including utilizing humans unfit for Strogification as a form of battery, which, though possibly less effective and necessitating more frequent renewal, serves as a substitute for the scarcity of stedium resources. The torso units in use, seemingly alive but unresponsive and unaffected by marine presence, are kept functional to continuously produce energy. Seeing this, it's barbaric, not advanced. I can only hope they aren't truly alive anymore, just bodies reacting to some twisted form of stimulus. Be extremely cautious, Corporo. We do not want to attract that harvester's attention. <gasps> yes, precisely what I was looking for. Give me a moment. Kane, you must protect me while I adjust the temperature. The sentries are akin to the previously seen technicians, but with notable differences. These units feature a head resembling those of gunners or berserkers, yet they are distinguished by a glass bubble containing green liquid and what appears to be a humanoid-like being inside of it. Unlike other Strog units, sentries are not vulnerable to headshots. Instead, their weak point is the encased being within the glass, suggesting a crucial role to the sentry's control and operation. The previously encountered technicians are described as being controlled by a brain floating in a red preservative fluid within a metal body. It seems the sentries operate on a similar principle, but with a key difference. The entire being, not just the brain, is preserved and visible inside their structure. This raises broader questions about the nature of the creature inside the sentries. What species does it belong to? Why are they kept intact rather than being disassembled for parts, as is typical with Strog modifications? I have almost finished my work here. Damn! Lieutenant Voss, I must remain here and maintain the temperature controls, or the area will return to its frigid state. Okay, stay there. Kane, get back here with us. But I need protection, Lieutenant. You'll be fine, Strauss. Kane, get out here on the double. Voss out. Was that the best you could do, Strog? The Strog are ramping up their attacks. They probably think we're heading straight for the Tetranode. We've got to move faster before they figure out our EMP plan. After that goes off, finding another way to the surface without the elevators is going to be a whole different challenge. Guess we'll be marching out, hoping not to turn this into a maze run. Kane, check that door. The shut off to the force field might be in there. Good job. The force field's down, Kane. Return to the squad immediately. Let's move it out, convoy. Strauss, stay on this side of the door in case we run into trouble. What the hell's going on here? Listen. Quick! Fire off the EMP! Almost there. Open fire! Open fire! Strauss. Half the squad is dead, so why don't you just be quiet while we pick up the pieces? Yes, sir. 
Damn it all. Bidwell was a good man. A good Marine. Strauss, the EMP's destroyed. But we still have to shut down this facility. Any ideas? Yeah, but it means I have to go directly to the Tetranaut. All right. Kane's the only one who's uninjured, so he's going with you. If my memory of the building schematics is correct, Kane must take a crawl way out, and I will meet him at the other end. Sounds like a plan. Boss out. Kane, I don't need to tell you how important this is. Whatever the cost, you must destroy the Tetranode and bring down the Nexus. With the mission's weight now resting heavily on Kane and Strauss's shoulders, they find themselves as the only two capable of reaching the Tetranode. Corporal Kane, you should have been here a long time ago. But we will speak of this later. That is the Tetranode. Destroying it is our primary objective. The entire facility is centered around this room. We need to find the power plant. Lead the way. While many might view Strauss as difficult to get along with, it's moments like these that reveal why he's an integral part of Rhino Squad. His quick thinking and ability to formulate a plan amidst high stakes are invaluable. It's also impressive to see his proficiency with weaponry, especially considering his background in a more comfortable tech position before being thrust into the front lines. There, now I will raise the power plant output and that will cause a heat buildup. Let us return to the Tetranode. From there, we must find a way to disable the emergency shutoff. If we don't disable it, it will detect the heat buildup and deactivate all systems. Not sure if Strauss already has an exit strategy or if he's just masking his fear. I will defeat you! Yeah, he's gotta have something figured out. Ah, the emergency shutoff controls. So far, you have done well, Corporal Kane. Your final task will be to shut down the coolant pumps. This will cause a complete meltdown of the Tetranode. For me, a power plant meltdown spells one thing. We're on a tight clock before this place turns into a literal inferno. There should be a console in the center of the room, Corporal Kane. Activate that and the coolant pumps will shut down. In a matter of minutes, the Tetranode will overheat and destroy itself. And this will render the Nexus useless to the Strog. The stream protectors are part of the Strog elite, distinguishable by their pristine white armor, setting them apart from the messy fusion of flesh and metal commonly seen in their forces. Tasked with guarding vital and significant locations within the Strog Empire, these protectors are essentially walking arsenals, heavily armored and equipped with an array of weaponry.
you come here. Let's start the job first. You come here. Let's start the job first. Do you read me, HQ? I've lost contact with my squad. In an unknown location, deep in enemy territory. I seem to be in some sort of assembly line. There's blood everywhere. Uh, the smell. <coughs> Shit. It's unbearable. There are human remains scattered all around. HQ, hey, hey. do you copy? Hey! You! Hey, Hold hey. on! I heard something. Is someone there? Down here. Hey, identify yourself. Bitterman. Staff Sergeant Bitterman from the 101st Spaceborne.